Tuesday's fuel tanker explosion at Chigogwe town along the Kampala Bombo Road that killed 17 people and injured 21 others hospitalized at Chirud Hospital yet again, albeit fleetingly reawakened. National consciousness about one of Uganda's commonplace problem of loaded fuel tankers squeezing in passenger traffic on the narrow potholed roads and petrol stations and depots ported haphazardly in residential and industrial hubs. Until 1994, Uganda had six licensed fuel retailers, namely Upet, Gapco, Shell, Ajip, Total and Caltex, but the liberalization of the market brought on board more players, currently more than 100. As at September 2021, according to the Ministry of Energy, there were 1,258 licensed fuel stations. There's also a long list of unlicensed retailers across the country. According to the Uganda National Bureau of Standards Guidelines, a fuel station must be at least 1,000 meters away from another. Human settlement should be 15 meters away. Even with the common knowledge that petrol is highly flammable and can strike catastrophe, like the Tuesday episode and the macabre instance before it, guidelines were shouldered fast. Frequently, local governments, including KCCA, are always trading blame with the Energy Ministry over the careless licensing of fuel stations, including in ungazated places such as residential areas, congested areas like slums and business centers. <laughs> Like in the case of the Chitezi landfill accident more than two months ago, NTV has established that for years KCCA had been engaged in back and forth discussions with multiple government institutions, including State House, about the urgent need to close the dump site. In the budgets for KCCA, the financial years 2019 2020, 2020 2021, 2021 2022, 2022 2023, 2023 2024, and 2024 2025, the request for solid waste management was listed among unfunded priorities. Buried therein was the request for a paltry 36 billion shillings for decommissioning the Chitezi dump site. Sums of monies have been appropriated. But time and again, they have been clustered amongst unfunded priorities, including given the current budget framework we have. It is there. And that, so why would you blame me? Because, I'll put, because of putting up persistent pleas, unless one expected me to dig into my pocket and decommission Chitez. We've raised this because uh, I've also had voices. Ministers have done what the ministry is not concerned. No, 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 no. We've raised this. We've taken all these arguments to Parliament for during the budgeting processes, and mm, there were no money. There was no money. Yes, there was no resources to help us. And what do you do? On Friday last week, the sacked Kampala Capital City Authority Executive Director, Dorothy Chisaka, her deputy, David Luyimbazi, and the Director of Public Health, Dr. Daniel Okello, were charged with 34 counts of manslaughter and 21 counts of causing harm by rash or negligent acts following the collapse of the Chitezi dump site that killed 34 people and injured 21 others on August 10th. While the charging of the former KCCA top executives was welcomed as a step in the right direction to ensure accountability in largely dysfunctional government, a string of events and document trail indicate that the accident could have been prevented had the powers that be across the executive and parliament acted both judiciously and on time. But power fights, non-prioritization, underhand methods and schemes of political expediency over a period of 10 years carried the day, resulting in the tragedy. These revelations also raise questions as to who exactly bears the responsibility for failing the people of Chitezi and to what degree. Kisaka and her co-accused have denied all charges. The Parliamentary Commission Statutory Authorities and State Enterprises Kosasa report released this week on the Auditor General's audited accounts of KCCA detailed that the entity included money for decommissioning Chitezi in the budget framework papers by the Ministerial Policy Statements reflected it is an unfunded priority. The Kosasa report recommended that the Minister of Finance, Permanent Secretary Ramadan Gori, and the Ministers of Kampala, the political supervisors of KCCA, should similarly be held accountable for the Chitezi accident. 
The State Minister for Kampala, Kawie Chofatogabie, rejected aims of culpability. In November 2023, I visited GTS when we had a, a lot of um, clogging of trucks could not move with, with their garbage. So the whole city was messed up. And moreover, we were preparing NAM and other things. So when we were there, we agreed. And uh, I told them, but the reality is they hid from me the fact that the hill can collapse. They take any in my heart. Because this, I had the director of public health, I had the deputy, DED, who was an engineer, and the other officers. They didn't tell me that this thing can collapse. He accused the former KCCA leadership of hiding information from his office. These are, these are the accounting officers. You know, we have two structures. There is a political structure for policy, for words, for everything. Now, when I get money from wherever, when I get this budget, I just deliver the whole budget to you, Elizabeth, to manage. And if you don't have good money, the accounting officers, like them, them as they have been, it's like a, your eyes are on rivers. And that's why most of the leaders fall into trouble. Chufato Gabie also accused the political wing at City Hall of compounding the problems. The problem is Rukwago, selfishness, self-seeking, envy, jealousness. So, you know, you know, like you hate something because you are hating a party in power, so you let that. And that is their move. That is their move. By the way, it's a very strategic move for them. So and very calculative. You're saying this is a political game? Hmm. They th remember they are now capitalizing, getting political capital out of all these instances. Mm -hmm. Now they thought if you do this, it is okay. Documents seen by NTV detailed that multiple government institutions knew about the exigency posed by Chitezi more than five years earlier. Since 1996, when the landfill was gazetted, Kampala's population was estimated around 774,241 as part to the 1991 census, 1.1 million in 2002, 1.4 million in 2014, and 1.8 million as part of the 2024 census has been expanding as is the city's boundaries, meaning more west pressure. In recent history, the first warning of the landfill spilling beyond its buffer zone was recorded in 2015, although there were no fatalities. There was another alert last year in November following the heavy rains the month before. A more serious warning was raised in January this year, which was flagged during the KCCA Executive Committee and subsequently to the Ministry of Kampala and the Parliamentary Committee on the Presidential Affairs, which scrutinizes budgets of the latter. The Kampala Lord Mayor, Elias Lukwago, concurred that sufficient red flags were raised. Yes. I am exonerated by the findings of Parliament. First of all, Parliament has recognized my efforts in pushing for decommissioning of Chitezi and establishing a modern recycling plant at Dundo. These persistent police they are talking about, they are not individual, they are not person to hold that it's only one person or the ED or whatever, but it's collective. And largely, I spearheaded all these, all these years I've been around, I've been pushing for decommissioning of Chitez, year in, year out. However, financing was the key constant missing. To this, it has become a practice by civil servants, excluding the political leadership in both financial and administrative matters. Why, for example, would the technical staff handle this matter without involving the Prime Minister, Minister for Finance, and the Lord Mayor of Kampala. And they go on and on and on and on. This is the reason I'm telling you, this report exonerates me. These, yes, these are findings based on facts that indeed in all these communications, I wasn't copied in. I wasn't involved in all these processes being handled between the technical team and the Ministry of Kampala. 
In the aftermath of the landfill spilling beyond its buffer zone on August 10th, sources told NTV that President Museven paraded Kisaka and her deputy Luyimbazi before cabinet to explain the slow implementation of its April 2023 directive on waste disposal by urban authorities and the urgent operationalization of the alternative landfill at Dundu in Mukono district. In the same vein, the president also directed the Inspector General of Government, Betty Kamia, to inquire into circumstances leading to the Chitezi accident. Upon receiving the probe report, the president on September 24th fired Chisaka, Limbazi and Dr. Okello in public interest due to significant evidence of criminal negligence. The IGG's report clearly outlined the severe oversight and negligence exhibited by these officials. State House noted in a statement further directing the Criminal Investigations Department to look into the matter focusing on the angle of criminal negligence associated to the landfill collapse upon which three officials were summoned on October 16th, detained, charged and eventually remanded on October 18th. The Chitezi landfill was established to handle waste from Kampala and the neighboring towns of Nansana, Kira and Kasangati. There are reports that the National Environment Management Authority, NEMA, twice in 2013 and in 2020 declined to renew the Chitezi operating license on account of depleted operational area. NTV has learned that NEMA did not decommission Chitezi per se. Uh, from a NEMA point of view, Chitezi is above its capacity. If it was a building, I would consider it a condemned building. So we already condemned the Chites as not fit to take more waste. Rather, the body in December 2020 tasked KCCA to submit concrete plans clearly indicating the measures that will be put in place to ensure that Chitezi West Disposal Site is improved to address the associated risks and impacts on human health and the environment. In a March 2, 2021 brief, KCCA submitted these plans to NEMA, charting undertaking feasibility studies and sourcing funds from government for decommissioning and related works with future plans of operationalizing Dundu in Champisi sub-county in Mokono district. It is imperative that we get support from both NEMA and the Ministry of Finance for KCCA to make the plans laid out the brief reads in part. On the other hand, Dundu area residents had rejected part of their village being turned into a dump site for waste generated 40 kilometers away, leaving Chitezi as the only option. The continued use of Chitezi stretched its capacity, the Kosasi report detailed. Both Likwago and Chufa Togabe concurred with the Kosasi findings. It should you reach the president when you have concerns in the city, yes. But most of the concerns, like I said, most of the concerns in the city must come from you, our accounting officer. They saw they had the foot on the ground. If the commander on the ground cannot raise these things, how would you know from the strategic uh, coordination office? So there's, if there's no communication in between there, and if you think you can't work with that, so, that's, those are the consequences. So what you're seeing is the, the topmost, the results of our own selfish, co-created kind of attitude. That I convened an, a, a crisis meeting here of the State Executive Committee and invited the management. We had to interrogate all these issues. And eventually we said, you know, you people, we have immediately to find solutions on how to decommission which it is. But of course they expressed uh, incapacity because of want of funds. But again, one other critical thing that emerged was about utilization of the 4.1 billion that has always been annually allocated towards managing it is. And we put a question to them. If the money was meant to flatten the garbage there, what explains the, mount, the, 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 the existence of those mountains there, the piling up of the garbage to that extent? having those huge, huge mountains of garbage, when actually every year we are spending 4.1 billion. And the accountability they were giving was really baffling, was disturbing. They also disapprove of each other's roles in the events leading to the tragedy. The question is, could I have faith to raise more money to protect these rights? No. 
I would have had you did out. So you did not No, no, no. That is uh, the, mo the only truth I can give you. And nothing else that but, but the truth. Until when it happened, that's when you even saw a memo. Also, there was a character from that place. The character was because of being in a bed with some other people, don't actually it was a kind of a silo working in a silo alone. Honorable speaking in court. Yes. The the character was don't divulge information to ministers. I don't know. That was people, people, you know, you know how people are. I tell you suffering getting information was at a go. -go. Mm. Every time you need something, no single director can speak to you, or at least you go back and be scolded and scolded. And, you know. So people started now fearing for their jobs and protecting their jobs. Done. Which is this? The, the opposite for now. What caused that? It depends on management styles of some people. Here we are. Those people who even got the information never took action and that's why that's the reason the ministers had to be indicted yeah I'll, 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 I'll allow me just read this one also verbatim here i think it's page 43 yes when they are talking about specifically that communication between the ed and the dr okero i'm sure yeah that later that the ministry, the ministry of Kampala was privy to that communication. They are saying the minister for Kampala, who was copied in the said letter, took no action. Not even a visit to the facility to ascertain its state. She never raised the matter in the cabinet and never followed up with the minister for finance. Clearly, this was a gross neglect of duty by the honorable minister. An alternative would have been arranged, like the current arrangement of depositing the garbage in other places and the acquisition of alternative press. The minister and the PSST cannot escape liability for what befell the country. However, it is on record that KCCA severally requested for funds to embark on decommissioning the site but were met with stalling. The Kosasa report fingered Gobi for keeping quiet upon receiving Kisaka's request on June 23, 2023 for 36 billion shillings to decommission Chitezi. The landfill has exceeded its design capacity and the current operations are not optimized to facilitate materials and resources recovery, adequate leachate treatment and pollution control, and efficient utilization of space, Jitaka's letter, also copied to the Minister for Kampala, Minsa Kabanda, and the chairperson of the Parliamentary Budget Committee, Reeds and Pat. The minister and the PSST cannot escape liability for what befell the country, the Kosasi report noted. In the June 20th letter to Gobi, Chisaka detailed 235 billion shillings as the capital expenditure of developing Dundu and 19.4 billion shillings was annual operational costs. The spread out cost per ton of waste was estimated at 17,860 shillings, that is $4.06 plus an operational cost of 16,700 shillings, about $4.03 per ton. If KCCA is to maintain its annual spend close to current levels, it will require viability gap funding grant of 175.5 billion shillings, about $47 million split between the construction phase and the operational phases of a period of 15 years, which is the conservative estimated lifespan of the Dundu processing site, she wrote. They are paying for their seats, actually. That is the technical team there. Reason being, they were now one one with the Mr. Lukwago and you know when Mr. Lukwago puts in his armpit you know what happens and if you don't wake up to realize that this man is taking me off the rail that is a blatant lie I can show you the ministerial press statement they were making because before then they are we even have a report of 2021, which was presented to council, and it's captured in the minutes. It was read before council by my deputy, Hawashi Podolini Nyanjula. 
general about solid waste management, but specifically about Chitez recommending the commission. That came on the heels of the Messrs. Queens, Queen, Queenlands and Leeds report that we must decommission Chitez. The, and unfortunately, it wasn't properly processed by council and they never pronounced on the same. But it is there. The recommendation was there. So, what more did the minister want me to do? On the other hand, City Hall spent 4 billion shillings as operational costs for Chitezi, spending at estimated $4,850, about 17.6 million shillings per ton of waste. I've told you the crisis meeting I caused the RBC in January, where we passed a resolution as the State Executive Committee that the annual, exp I mean the expenditure of 4.1 billion annually towards maintenance of Chitezi should be halted. In 2021 and 2022, KCCA engaged the Uganda Development Bank and the Ministry of Finance's Public-Private Partnership Unit about the possibility of financing the Dundu plant directly or as a partnership respectively, which proposals were unsuccessful. In November 2021, KCCA Technical Feasibility Study concluded that Chitezi was operating beyond capacity and that the slopes of the West Mountain were geotechnically unstable, thus posing an imminent risk of a West Slide. A September 2022 Environment Impact Assessment financed by the UK Aid also recommended urgent closure of Chitezi. A December 2022 Social Impact Assessment co-financed by the World Bank's IFC and UK Aid recommended setting aside funds to address the social economic impacts on communities dependent on the landfill. The February 2023 Greta Kampala Metropolitan Area Solid Waste Management Strategy highlighted the urgent closure of Chitezi and the need to operationalize new waste disposal sites. The Auditor General in 2023 reported that Chitezi was overfilled, rendering it hazardous to public health. From the totality of, of what I've explained to you, they are now part of the problem. And since they have been indicted by Parliament, they, they, they should be out of saturation. They should go to the dock to, to join the trio. They are myopic. They are short-sighted. And the Rudy Mayer is a story. They know all these things. They have never bl brought them on the surface. Those days you used to say the Rudy Mayer has no powers. 2021 amended act. Now bestowed all the powers into the Rudy Mayer. To even supervise and oversee. Because he has three broad roles. And the last one is to report, which he doesn't do. The three years I've spent here, I've never seen any single report from the road mayor in my life. And yet he has to report to the minister to update us on so many things that are happening. The last warning came 40 days before the calamity. In a July 2nd memorandum to Chisaka and Luyimbazi, Dr. Okello reflagged the emergency situation at the landfill consisting of the developing cracks and waste movement, blocked drainage channels, and a depleted operational area. Then tragedy struck. Whenever such an accident happens, the dead are quickly pushed to the back burner of the country's collective memory and forgotten until the next tragedy strikes.